presidential candidates. GOP hopefuls are in Iowa today. They're wanting to impress voters at the state fair. That's a fun one, by the way. The Iowa caucuses, just about five months away, January 15th. And it's seen as a key step in the race for the White House, as you may know. And all eyes today are on Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. He's coming off a campaign reset. The polls showing, though, that he'll have some work to do on the ground in the Hawkeye State. The former President Donald Trump up by more than 20 points. Um, but look at that. I mean, that it's tightening a little bit as more people take more percentages out of what we saw at the very top of, of the chart there. So this is interesting. It's always good to watch democracy in progress. All right. Meanwhile, Chris Christie is taking his campaign to New Hampshire today and taking shots at DeSantis. DeSantis is now bracing for an onslaught of attacks from the other presidential candidates at the first debate that's now 10 days away, especially if former President Donald Trump is a no-show because DeSantis will then have the highest percentage of anybody on stage of projected voters. He's or projected voters for president. He's reportedly prepping intensely for the big target that politically will be on his back. Sure, Michael Singleton is the host of the Sure, Michael Singleton show on Sirius XM and a former deputy chief of staff of HUD. Leslie Marshall is a Fox News contributor, and it is fantastic to have them both. Sure, Michael, I'll start with you and what's ahead for Governor DeSantis. I mean, I think this is going to be a significant litmus test, uh, Harris, in terms of the governor's ability to showcase strength. Uh, if the former president is not there, then all of the candidates are indeed going to focus their ire on him, as they should. And whether or not he can defend off multiple attacks will be a determinative factor, I would argue, for voters in terms of sticking with him or moving to the former president or someone else. If the former president is on that stage, I hope Ron DeSantis does more than preparing once a week because it's going to take a whole lot more. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. I mean, without Trump there, he will be the focus. And do you think the president will watch this and maybe take some notes and maybe do his own debate before, you know, during primary season? What do you think, Leslie? Could it happen? RFK Jr. and Joe Biden? <laughs> no, I don't think RFK Jr. and Joe Biden. I do think Donald Trump will watch, and I do think he'll take notes or have somebody else maybe uh, send him some clips, uh, certainly. Look, I would agree that uh, Ron DeSantis is going to be uh, front and center for this, but he has two problems, Harris. He doesn't just have a Donald Trump problem. He has a Ron DeSantis problem. If you've noticed him out with a lot of people, unlike his wife, who's just been rocking it and doing great and very popular, he, he's not being very sociable. And sadly, politicians has largely become a popularity contest, and Ron DeSantis needs to be the most popular, whether it's at the fair, whether it's on a debate stage, and we're seeing from the numbers that's not happening. I hate to say this, and I love to say that I was right, but I hate to admit that Chris Christie is doing the right thing by attacking everybody who's not Chris Christie, and you're seeing his numbers rise. I think he is somebody we actually should watch and not discount as many did when he first threw All his right, name. All right, I want to break that down a little bit, Shermichael. Likeability. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a governor in Florida who has likeability about his policies. And I don't know if the plan is to take all of that out. He rolled out his economic uh, message last mm -hmm. week. Is that critical? And by the way, I live in New Jersey. I remember Chris Christie. He was pretty caustic. <laughs> so, like, cussing at people to get off the beach. And I, I don't know. Does he have likability? What are your thoughts, Sir Michael? I mean, I think uh, Chris Christie has a huge likability problem. And, and that problem is that most Republican voters don't trust Chris Christie. It's why he's around 1.9%, 2% within the margin of error. So, as far as I'm concerned, as a strategist, he isn't a significant candidate to really worry about. Now, as it pertains to uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, I mean, you're right, Harris. Many Republican voters, for the most part, do like his policies, but I've always articulated this. Before voters will pay attention to your policies, they want to know if they like you first. As Leslie said, it's about that likability factor. Hmm. I always I always would compare it to going to a store and buying your, your favorite bar of soap or your favorite toothpaste. You stick with it because you like the brand and you get into the details later. Well, candidates have to market themselves about likability first. That, that's the first litmus test. Can you put that graphic back up? I'm going to ask my team to put that back on the screen for just a second. So the litmus test that you mentioned, the polling, the fundraising, and now there's that pledge of whether or not you would support any Republican as this whole primary shakes out. Uh, did you notice that Ron DeSantis now has been added with Vivek Ramaswamy? I, I wonder how important that will be 
for beating Democrats because they tend to come on board. So now you have two. You've got Vivek and you've got Governor DeSantis, Ramaswamy and DeSantis now pledging whoever it shakes out to be, they will support that Republican candidate for the White House. I just wanted people to catch that. Sure, Michael and Leslie, thank you. And Leslie, you mentioned Thanks, the wife. It's families in focus here. We're going to roll it out, a special series focused <laughs> on those closest to the 2024 presidential candidate.